All 52 American hostages have been seen and are safe and well. The off-license shooting policeman is paralysed. And in football, Aston Villa win today to close the gap on Liverpool. Good evening. Two Algerian diplomats have seen all the American hostages and have said they're doing well. It's the first time all the hostages have been seen by neutral observers since Easter, nearly nine months ago. They've just spent their second Christmas in captivity in Iran. After 12 hours with the hostages, most at a secret address in Tehran, the Algerians said they were in good health and that their living quarters were satisfactory. President Carter said he was reassured that they were, being, they were alive and well, but he told reporters their continued impres imprisonment was insulting. The Iranians have released more films showing the hostages celebrating Christmas at their secret prison. David Smith in London has that story. Their second Christmas in captivity, and on Christmas morning, the two women among them led visiting clergymen in silent night. Then, under the watchful eyes of the censors, messages to their families. Can you all sing with me? Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Catherine Cobe, director of a society which ironically was set up to promote friendship between Iran and America. I'm feeling good, and I love the weight, for which I'm grateful. Anne and I keep busy every day. We're reading and studying faithfully, and I love you all very much, and I look forward to being with you, hopefully, as soon as we can. Merry Christmas. A few admitted just how depressed they were, but most tried to put a brave face on it for their relatives back home. All the mail that we get, and we do get letters, uh, tells us to hang in there. And after 400 or so days, I guess we can hang on a little longer, hopefully not too much longer. So happy holidays, and uh, don't worry about us. The day that we're released, that'll be our Christmas. By and large, the hostages appeared to be in good health and they were clearly boosted no end by presents from their families. They all have one hope of getting out soon. But as President Carter said tonight as he watched this, we don't know what the future will hold. The Archbishop of Canterbury's special envoy, Mr. Terry Waite, was given VIP treatment when he arrived in Iran to try to see the four Britons who have been held without charges since August. He's carrying a letter from Dr. Runcie, which he hopes to deliver to Ayatollah Khomeini tomorrow and then see the prisoners on Sunday. In his letter, the Archbishop says, these are days when religious leaders should act together to achieve a better order for ordinary people of the rest of the world, an order of justice. This visit is being made um, primarily on religious and humanitarian grounds. It is not arranged by the British Foreign Office. Um, it is arranged by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And um, we, I am here on religious and humanitarian grounds. And I would like to be able to speak uh, to any leader in this country, if I have the opportunity, on that basis. Because I think that is the basis where we understand each other. We are united in uh, a common uh, belief in one God. The policeman shot in a raid on an off-license in West London on Tuesday is now paralysed from the chest down. The bullet which hit him is still lodged in his body. Police have revealed that Constable Philip Oles was kicked by his attackers after he was shot. It was as PC Olds lay shot in the shoulder in the doorway of the Hayes off-license, his truncheon drawn, that one of the two raiders kicked him in the left eye. Tonight at Hillingdon Hospital, he's said to be off the danger list, but still very seriously ill. Although he's fully conscious, his body is paralyzed from the chest down. The bullet, which passed first through his left shoulder, then a lung before touching part of the spinal cord, remains lodged in the back of his chest. Surgeons won't consider removing it for some time, and they're not sure if the paralysis will be permanent. Tonight, one of his officers told how PC Olds, 11 years in the force, had two previous commendations for bravery. He'd only recently returned to duty after being seriously injured in a motorbike accident while on patrol. Scotland Yard, meanwhile, is saying nothing about the hunt for the two men in balaclavas involved in Tuesday's shooting. Nick Gowing, ITN, Hillingdon Hospital. 
Stacy Nelson, the Yorkshire girl who was abducted in Spain on Sunday, has been reunited with the family, and tonight they've all been at a party in Barcelona. Her parents say she was ill-treated by the man who took her away. The man's been arrested. David Smith asked Stacy, who is seven, if she was frightened during her four days being held. Yes, I was a little bit frightened. When in particular were you frightened? When he hit me. What did he hit you for? I managed to escape. How did you manage to escape? He was asleep and I ran out of the car. What did you think when you saw your mum and dad last night? I felt excited. The Polish Foreign Minister, Josef Syrek, has been to the Kremlin to see the Soviet President, Mr. Brezhnev. It was the first meeting between the leaders of the two countries since the Warsaw Pact summit on Poland three weeks ago, and the mood is said to have been warm and cordial. Both sides condemned imperialist and reactionary attempts to interfere in Polish affairs, and Mr. Brezhnev said he was confident Poland would overcome its difficulties under Communist Party guidance. Our diplomatic editor says Mr. Shirek's invitation to Moscow means the Russians intend to keep a close watch on developments in Poland and that the Polish leaders are being told to reassert Communist Party control. Now the Boxing Day sport and, as usual, the Christmas holiday has produced some unexpected results on the soccer field and the race course. Here's our sports correspondent, Tony Francis. It's getting tighter at the top of Division 1. Liverpool dropped a point at Old Trafford, but Aston Villa and Ipswich both won. And don't write off Nottingham Forest, 4-1 winners at Wolves. A Boxing Day gala at White Hart Lane, where Spurs and Southampton shared eight goals. Perhaps we should feed them on turkey and plum pud more often. Villa had Peter With back from suspension to face Stoke, and what a big difference he made. Chris Jameson reports. The standard for the game was set early on. A great header from Stoke's Mike Doyle but his effort was spoilt by bad finishing. And that was something that afflicted Aston Villa too. Gary Shaw, number eight, had a busy afternoon taking shots at Stokes' goal. But something was lacking, and the match at times fell apart into pantomime. Villa needed both points, and in the end, they deserved them, but more for effort than skill. Again, it was Gary Shaw with the build-up. The finishing touches, though, were left to Peter with Chris Jameson, ITN Sport, Villa Park. Ipswich were back on song against their East Anglian brothers Norwich, winning 2-0 at Portman Road. Ian Edwards. Ipswich in the dark shirts are unbeaten at home for the last 15 months, and there was no sign of them losing that record today. The return after suspension of Eric Gates provided bite to an already sharp attacking line where Alan Brazil, number 10, lived up to his nickname of Pele. He's already scored similar goals this season against Ray Clements and Peter Shilton, and in the second half was involved in setting up the second goal for John Walk. Chris volley from across by Muren. Two goals in the lead, Ipswich were in no danger of losing, and with two games in hand over league leaders Liverpool, are more than handily placed to challenge seriously for the championship. They might even have increased their tally had Baker in the Norwich goal not been as quick to react to the threat of O'Callaghan. Ian Edwards, ITN Sport, Portman Road. The upshot is Liverpool stay top. They've scored more goals than Villa, though the points and goal difference are identical. Ipswich have two games in hand, and Forrest, my early season tip for the title, could do it yet. Well, I was at Loftus Road this morning to see West Ham, the second division leaders, collapse 3-0 to Queen's Park Rangers, and they had their leading scorer, David Cross, taken off with a suspected crack rib. Watch closely now for the penalty that never was, but perhaps should have been. Stainrod of Rangers was uprooted outside the area and West Ham got away with a bad crime. The referee kept to the letter of the law and awarded a free kick, but for once, justice was done. Flanagan's shot and Siltman finishes it off. 1-0 to Rangers and West Ham had lost their polish. QPR weren't that impressive, but early in the second half, this run by Tony Curry led to the second goal. The chance seemed to have gone when Rangers spent ages on the edge of the West Ham penalty box. 
They kept possession, though, and Flanagan was finally left with a free header. Parks made a hash, and for the second time, Flanagan saw someone else, Curry, get the last touch. Towards the end, Stainrod, delightfully, made it 3-0 for Queen's Park Rangers. But don't read too much into the result. West Ham were surely only hiccuping, and QPR aren't world beaters yet. West Ham's lead has been cut to three, with Swansea winning again and slipping into second place. Chelsea's problems continue. A 2-0 defeat at Luton pushes them down to third. Well, happily, Boxing Day crowds were up on last year, despite the lack of public transport. Racing now, and Silver Buck has been quoted at 8-1 to one for the Cheltenham Gold Cup after today's convincing win in the King George VI chase at Kempton. It was the third win in a row for jockey Tommy Carmody. Anna Glog's daughter made all the early pace, but coming to the final fence, she's been caught by Silver Buck and the veteran night nurse, John Penny, the commentator. It's Knight Nurse on the near side taking on Silver Buck, who still has the lead as they're coming towards the final fence. It's Silver Buck in the lead, over, and Knight Nurse is gone! Oh my word, he hit the top of that one. And the clock daughter now fighting back. Silver Buck is in the lead, they have 100 yards still to go, and Tommy Carmody looks all set to complete the three-timer. He's done it, Silver Buck is the winner. So Silver Buck first at 9-4, to four, the favourite, Anna Glog's daughter was second at 5-1, to one, and Diamond Edge third, 11-4. And finally, it's nearly the end for the bargain hunters who've been sleeping rough, waiting for the big store sales to start. This Iranian student would have spent 10 days outside a London store by the time she gets her blue fox fur coat reduced from £1,500 to £95 tomorrow. For that sort of deal, a holiday without some home comfort seems to become almost a pleasure. But it will be a tough last night. There's frost forecast again. And that's the way the news looks tonight. Hope you had a good Christmas. ITN's back tomorrow with free bulletins. Good night.